Let's jump to the war here, and today we've got a Saving Your Disaster battle, which is probably going to end up being a Saving Your Disaster campaign, because despite the fact that uh, we're playing a faction that I'm pretty familiar with, uh, the Order of Lawmasters, playing with a Legendary Lord that I think is pretty good, unfortunately he's not particularly leveled up, and playing with an army that I really couldn't approve of more, you know, Sisters of Avalon Spam, unfortunately we might just be up against a little bit too much. Now, Sisters of Avalon Spam is not the best Doomstack that you can make in the, in the game, by any means. It's a, it's a good high elf Doomstack because it's very versatile and you can actually recruit loads of them. But there are certain scenarios in which it really doesn't perform very well. One of them is when you go up against massive beasts like this. And it's not that Sisters of Avalon aren't good at taking out beasts. It's just that you basically need all of them to focus fire on one of them and you just have to take them out one at a time. But there's simply just too many of them here. And even if just a couple of them get to our front line, it's basically going to be all over. Especially compounded with the fact that we have 19 units, not 20. And they have 29 units, plus the Feral Cold ones, which will of course tie down our forces. So we're probably just up against a little bit too much. But I'll do the best I can, because even if we're going to lose this battle, we can kill as many of these dinosaurs as possible. And since it's fairly early on in the campaign, it's like turn 52, which is kind of ridiculous that Teclis is only rank 11. Really by this point here, especially if you're playing on Legendary Difficulty, which this is on, Teclis should at least be level 20. Um, and we can see here he doesn't have many of his good spells, so that's he's not going to be very useful to us in this battle, so that's really unfortunate. I think what he's gone for is Lightning Strike, which is good, but we're defending here, so it's of no use to us. But we'll do the best we can. We've also got a Handmaiden of the Ever Queen, which doesn't appear to be highly leveled up, so they're not going to, well, she's not going to be particularly useful. You know, it's not like she's going to be able to take on a Carnosaur in melee. She'll get a few shots in, but that's about it. Okay, so the defensive position here is actually really good, because... the This, like, obstruction here will funnel them down one way. That That is really good, but it still probably isn't going to be enough. Alright, uh, let's see, how can we do this? The Eagle Claw Bolt Throw has probably got the least DPS out of any of the, uh, the units that we have here. So I'm going to put that out front. It might seem stupid. What are you doing putting your artillery out front? Yeah, well, you know, it's just not as valuable as the Sisters of Avalon. And we need to have tar pits put out in front. We don't have any tar pit units. Um, but we need something out there to slow down the approach. And it, like I said, it's just not going to do much anyway. I could put it in over here. But even it's just it's just not gonna do any damage, so I'd much rather it get hit first. Okay, so you probably will need to get their attention early on. If we can drag some of them over here earlier, that would be ideal. Because if we had if we had to like take them on in waves, that would be alright. But since we're probably going to have to fight them all at once, that that is where the real problem is. Taking on you know, 29 units all at once. The thing is, we've got enough ammunition and killing power here to kill off their entire army twice over. You know, they've got enough ammo. But, they're low rank, which means they're not going to shoot particularly fast. And, if they're not going to shoot particularly fast, they're, they're, we're going to be losing this battle with most of our ammunition. And there's nothing we can do to slow them down. Now, the next thing is try to put these Sisters of Avalon in a formation that would allow basically the back lines to fire for as long as possible. If I put it out into one single line, the f you know, we'll do a lot of damage on the first charge, but it, it just, they're going to be stuck in melee, like the whole lot of them. This way, since Sisters of Avalon do have pretty good leadership, um... They're not likely to break until they at least hit half health. So the trick here is to just try to have as many Sisters of Avalon shooting for as long as possible. My power is yours. Generally speaking, I, I feel like they're going to come down this way, not around here. Especially if this is where I put my troops. Like if I put a troop over here, then they'll come down this way. 
Now, if I had a fast unit, I could send someone over here to try to, like, lure some of them away. But I don't have any particularly speedy units, so that's bad. Now, that's not me saying that he should have a cavalry unit in the army, because high elf cavalry sucks, in my opinion. Um... You know, with the exception of Dragon Princes, but it seems to be a bit too early to have Dragon Princes anyway. Um, but yeah. Alright, so try to concentrate it a little bit more in the back here, because if I keep putting them too far back, they're just not going to shoot at the start of the battle. So, it's a bit of a weird formation. But I guess we'll just do what we can. We don't want Teclas getting wounded early on. Because at least he can cast a couple of spells. Alright, so you go up ahead. If we can get the attention of a Bastilodon, a Stegodon, Carnosaur, whatever, and draw it over here early, that would be ideal. Now, we do have to keep in mind that they're going to drop that that uh, Feral Cold One ability. Pretty early on, they'll have three of those. And whilst they don't do much damage, every little bit will annoy us. Alright, stop. That thing's going to break, surely. No matter where we put this, they're going to pop that on it, so. Try to get them organized while they're getting over here. Hey, at least there's no Dreadsaurian. That would just be annoying. Mm, delicious shot that missed there. Lovely. Uh, she actually got four kills, but I guess this, she did still miss. Doesn't look like they're coming at us. I need them to come over here. Would you please not miss? Alright, she got it, but it just didn't really do much damage. So the Feral Carnosaur seems to have pretty good magic resistance. I wonder if that's because of Krokgar. But if that was the case, surely the, the Feral Bastilodon would as well. Where's the other kind of source? Can, can, get moving over here, try and draw them over. Could work out. Just come, come this way. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Because she was not going to be of much use to us in this battle. But you know, luring a Carnosaur over here early, but they're not taking the bait. It was always a bit of a risk. But like I said, I didn't have any fast units, and she was quite literally had the least amount of killing power out of anyone in this army. She's distracting them, but that just didn't that just didn't work out there. Unfortunate. Because now. Now they're coming full strength, and we haven't killed any of their units off yet. They're still walking, though. Ready. We're going to stay in that formation. If she can lure a few guys over there, that, that could be good. Techless. Unfortunately, this fireball is just not going to do anything. Okay, we should probably try to focus on the Carnosaur here. Like I said, try to kill as many of these units as possible. She's distracting one of the dinosaurs. Not good enough to make them run away, they need to die. Okay, good, good, good. This Carnosaur is almost dead. Alright, let's start popping down some spells. Let's try to slow them down. Any point killing Gorok? Probably not. I 
and just try and take them out one at a time. Uh, Feral Carnosaur over there, that's pretty important to kill. That magic resistance certainly isn't good for us. Well, we just do what we can. Cool. Take out the damage one. Like I said, we want to be trying to kill as many of the beasts as possible. This is The plan is definitely working. It's just that it's probably not enough. Okay, that's another beast down. Take out the other Carnosaur, and then that's all three of their Carnosaurs dead. Good, another one down. No more Carnosaurs for them. Those were the most dangerous. But as our front line is completely dissolved now... We're not doing as much damage. Okay, good, another one down. Looks like another one's down. Alright, take this one out next. Basically, we're make, trying to make them work for every inch as hard as possible. Every inch of ground has to cost up. Good, another one's dead. Take out another feral stegodon over here. Let me try and move you back. I've only got like three units that aren't in um, the line of sight, uh, aren't in melee right now. Oh look, we got some, some back here that recovered. No point putting Teclas into melee, he's just not going to be able to do anything. There's the army loss penalty. Unfortunately this one here didn't die, but... We did have the option to withdraw, so... Okay, let's have a look at the damage. So all of their Carnosaurs are dead. One Stegodon's down. One, hang on, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine beasts are down. Like, we're not completely out of units yet. But yeah, taking out half of them. I mean, what more could I have really done? Would have been nice if we could have lured them, um, you know, a, a um, Carnosaur earlier. But, you know, she's not on a horse. She couldn't move too far. I had to get their attention somehow. Ah, oh, there was no hope. Look at this. Look at this. Okay. What happened to the rest of your beasts? I thought there was more than that. I mean, we still don't stand a chance, but... Kill them. Yeah, I'll do what I can. Um, this gives us a chance to kill some more of their, their, uh, their beasts. Because even, even if we win here, they're just going to send more armies at us. I mean, those guys didn't look like they had moved yet. So... Ugh. Then we have to fix this campaign. He only has one province. This starting province. But I'm assuming he can recruit Sisters of Avalon. Alright, so this map here is nowhere near as good as the other one for us. So... Everyone just... Just get ready to... Stand and fight and die. And then we have to try to recover. So hopefully the amount of damage that we've done to them will stop them from invading us for a short time. Alright, so, again, focus on killing whatever beasts we can. So that Feral Stegodon there, that was what we were working on right at the end of the previous battle. Need to finish the job.
Unfortunately, these spells here just aren't going to help us in this situation. We need far more powerful spells. Something like Net of Amantok would have been really good. Um, I mean, the infantry is not the concern. It's the beasts. Good job there. You missed. But, you know, that happens. Yeah, yes. just, it is what it is. Going abroad. Making my way. Forward. Going. Crush them. Maintaining order. Handmaiden of the Ever Queen. My queen. Out of my way. We gotta start shooting. Let's take it on here now. Alright, cool. So it's dead. Uh, next one. Let's let's actually aim for the Razordon hunting pack. Because I reckon this is an easy kill. Thing is, though, it doesn't mean shit unless we actually wipe out the unit. Breaking it's not good enough. Wipe it out. Alright, that should be it dead. Alright, let's try and take out a Stegodon. Actually, no, you know what? A Bastilodon might be a bit easier. Rather than go for something that we're probably not going to kill, let's at least try to kill something that maybe we have a chance of killing. Unfortunately, in this battle here, Tyrion was less useful to us than the uh, Sisters of Avalon, which is why I put him up front. Because his magic just isn't going to cut us in this situation. He's far too low level. Looks like we might actually kill that. The gods honor us. No, he's still actually alive. But he's shattered, so he's good as dead. Come on, keep shooting. Yes. One more volley. Come on, it's nearly dead. Don't don't give up on it now. Good job. All right. Uh, Sacred Coxicles are probably not going to wipe them out, but it would be good if we could try, because I don't think they've got a lot of missile resistance. Problem is now they're in melee. Even with guard mode, they just don't want to shoot, and that's basically GG there. Okay. So, with this loss, now we have to start working on rebuilding the campaign. Hopefully I've done enough damage to it so that they just don't bother us for a little while. Because I don't think we've got an army left at the Star Tower. So yeah, two big beasts. So of the Right of Primeval Glory, only two fe um, Feral Stegodons remain. That's it. And they can only cast that. Once every 40 turns. So it's not like they're going to just replace that straight away. Whereas we can replace this. You know, the... The Handmaiden dying obviously sucks. But I don't think it was... Oh, that's not good, but... Yeah, do. Um, I don't think it was a particularly good one. I mean, I, I didn't get a chance to see what the trait was. But I don't think it was resistant. Teclas actually gained a level up, because he was rank 11 on during the first battle. I reckon she was rank 1. But now we can actually have a look at what the situation of the uh, of our provinces are, and see about how, how feasible it is to turn things around. I mean, obviously, it doesn't look good at the moment. I mean, it wouldn't be a disaster can if it did. A uh, disaster campaign if it did. But sometimes having no army can actually be a bit of a help, because at least we'll make a lot of cash, so we should be able to raise an army reasonably quickly, because we'll have the funds. This is assuming a bunch of stuff. We'll have to just see. Okay. We've got loads of money, so that's good. Um, let's have a look at the situation. So, Star Tower. Order must be maintained. That's good. Uh, you didn't build a mage building. I think this needs to go here. Um... 
probably would really help to build a noble. Train a noble, I mean. Because I definitely don't want to demolish this. The thing is with this, though, it doesn't increase capacity for nobles, so I usually don't build them in minor cities. How are you going with technology? What the fuck? Dude, 52 turns, 53 turns, no technology. <laughs> what have you been doing? Just pressing end turn constantly? <laughs> no technologies researched. Way to set yourself up for a disadvantage. Okay. Um, Alright, you know, we'll, we'll figure something out. Now, here's the thing. Do we need to worry about the first tier of technology? Like, do I need to build a barracks here? Should I bother even starting? Is there going to be anything here that's going to boost Sisters of Avalon? No. Nah. So, don't worry about that. Uh, what does this one need? Archive. Um, precise flexion could be good. We can't seem to replace the artillery building at the moment. You're fairly close to getting the next tier of... Um, next, you know, getting this to tier 5. Unfortunately, we don't have time to wait around for that. So, uh, let's have a look at these as well. This will help us maintain public order, reduce construction costs. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a really good, um, uh, what's it called? Right, and you just haven't been at it. You could have done this, like, well, twice by now. Uh, but still. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um... Yeah, that's not gonna help. Okay, well let's let's get a new general in. What kind of what kind of traits do we have? Vigorous, Hawkeye, Dragon Wield, Ardent, Organized. I mean it doesn't really matter because I'm just gonna get Techless up in here anyway. So just get somebody who's not completely useless. Yeah, that'll be fine. Can I offer assistance? Oh, they take two turns to recruit. We're gonna to have to um I think we'll have to switch to this. We need to recruit quickly. Lady of the Phoenix Court. Hmm. That's going to be a pain. We should definitely go Sisters of Avalon over regular archers, especially going up against Lizardmen. Regular archers just aren't going to pierce their armor. But it's going to take two turns before anything gets recruited. That's not good. So the main purpose of getting a noble would just be so that we could start accumulating influence. We've got a little bit at the moment. But I'm just wondering also if we get a little bit of cash. I mean, it doesn't really matter that much at this point. We should be able to afford a, a full stack of Sisters of Avalon. Alright, looking at Handmaidens. Let's have a look here. Incendiary. A lot of people really like that trait. I personally don't really care for it. It's... It just depends on whether you value uh, these people as melee fighters or whether you p would prefer to boost the entire army. This is why I usually go for resilient or no, resistant. But I'm not seeing that trait here, so I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. Because um, we're going to run out of money pretty quickly. I guess if we build this, we could get artillery again. Pretty quickly. Because I usually go with two Eagle Claw Bolt Throwers. So that we can assault settlements. Like, if we if we could actually make a move on the Awakening. Like, you're not going to be able to make maintain public order there. Like, I can certainly see the value in why went to Chupai Odal. You know, you want the gold there. And it doesn't look like they, they've been here for long. It looks like they've recently cleared out Clan Pestilence. But, okay, this is what I think he did. He came down here, landed there, had just had no intel, and so walked right into, basically, the lizard nest. So, if he had just done a little bit of intel, you know, scattered ahead, with using the handmaiden, um, he wouldn't have gotten himself into that situation. You really can't undervalue the, the importance of scouting ahead. You need to know what you're going into. If you just blindly walk into the uh, fog of war, you are going to die very often. Alright, so that's just that. Let's just, um, alright. Okay, uh, okay, I will build this to get the two pieces of artillery, because that's usually what I get in my armies. I'll, I'll essentially recruit what he already had, and then we'll, we'll see how we go from there. 
Uh, I'm curious as to whether or not we should go for this, because there's going to be a revolt soon. If we could just slow that down. A bit of extra influence wouldn't hurt as well. Actually, if we're going to do that, we can save some money. And that saved us about 600 gold, which, you know, that's not bad. Okay. Your command. And uh, the province here isn't going to revolt. Just yet. Okay, there's nothing else we can do. I doubt anyone's going to negotiate with us. What, well, you haven't met anyone? Man, you've really sat around doing nothing for 50 turns. Now, I, I totally see the... It being a good... Definitely, you definitely want to go for Sisters of Avalon early, but don't do nothing on a legendary difficulty campaign. You've got to be doing something. Sack settlements, fight battles all the time. Part of the reason why we couldn't win that battle is because Teclas had none of his abilities. Like I said, he should have been level 20, or even level 30 is pushing it, but he should have been at least level 20. And with level 20, if he had put some points into the magic, there could have been more things I could have done with it. I can't remember if he gets Net of Amentok. I think he does. But that would have been really helpful. Alright, so they're, they're not coming at us right away. They want to recruit some more forces. Now, when Teclas comes back in three or four turns, I'm assuming he's got Lightning Strike. So... We're not going to get ourselves back into that situation again, because next time I fight Gorok, I'm going to lightning strike him. That's another thing as well. When you're playing on Legendary Difficulty, you really need to try not to have defensive battles as often as possible. Try to avoid them. It is far better to attack, because the AI is far more defensive, like my far more passive, which means they're easier to deal with. Always fight to your enemy's weaknesses, never to their strengths. Um... That influence would be good. I'm going to take it. That means there will be a revolt fairly soon. But that's okay. Um, no regiment of renown available either. Because, yeah. Uh, okay. So, this will unlock some technology. Uh, I could also build the, the Elven Embassy to get started on these, but you don't have any of those resources, except for the one for the drag, uh, this one here. We're not getting any dragons, so don't worry about that. Um, a wizard would be good to get entrepreneur. I mean, we're not making a whole lot of cash at this stage here, but obviously we don't need a wizard attached to to um, Teclis's army, but I don't know, I'll just do it again. All right, we need to get another one of these recruiting. I don't really want to use the global recruitment for this just because it's it's just a little bit too pricey. Like, we've got money, but we don't have that much, and I'm going to spend it all. Uh, I, otherwise, I would have used global recruitment. I'll probably use global recruitment for the artillery because they'll only take two turns um, in global, so that won't take too long. And I, I don't think they're particularly expensive because they're, they're not good quality artillery. You just basically have them just so that you can... Uh, attack walled settlements with relative ease. Like, I'm really leaning towards going for the Awakening first. Um, we don't have walls at the Star Tower. It's not super valuable, except for the fact that this is our recruiting settlement. I mean, if we captured the Awakening right now, it would literally be more valuable than the Star Tower. It'd have more build slots. Alright, so we basically just have to wait. There'll be a revolt here in four turns. By that time, we should have enough troops in order to deal with the revolt. Plus, as we recruit more units, we will increase public order. And who knows, maybe Teclas will have a trait that will increase public order as well. I don't know, I haven't looked at Teclas. But yeah, if... If there's any lesson to be learned from this mistake, this campaign here, do not sit on your on your ass at the beginning of a campaign. Okay, Teclas should not be rank 11 at turn 50. You should at least be rank 20. Even if you're not capturing territory, like honestly, the amount of territory you have is fine. It's not bad, because it's good territory. But you got to level up your Legendary Lords. You've got to get their abilities.
I feel like he trained just by fighting rebels and that was it. On, you know, the one every 10 turns that they showed up. Wow, another one. Okay. Uh, okay, well... Hmm, if we do this again... Ooh, growth plus 10. Hmm. So you've got a lot of influence, but... Yeah, we don't want to revolt too soon, because we're not ready yet. But a bit of extra growth could help get us to tier 5. That would have to be really helpful for you. So... I'm going to go with that. The Asser are troubled. Thing is with this, I'm just going to recruit the artillery and then destroy this. Because we're not going to recruit two Our armies. Princess. Now, looking at what we've got here... No, it doesn't matter too much. Maybe what I could do is recruit one of them just to increase the growth. No, 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 no. Look, if they're not providing that trait... Well, okay, okay. I don't want to do this, but since it's a desperate situation and it would really help, I'm going to recruit this one here just for the turn and disband it next turn, maybe, um, for one that's hopefully going to get resilience. That's a very important trait. It'll make our Sisters of Avalon significantly better, but there's no guarantee we're going to get it. Um, Techless available in two turns. At least it's only 10 influence. We can essentially do this like 15 times. The people are rested. And there should be an entrepreneur mage available. That'll cost us 40. And that, that'll that'll very likely uh, boost our income. I mean, increasing this by 30% should. Yeah. Alright. And, the, of course, the additional 3% tax rate. Which, at this point in time, wouldn't really do a whole lot. There's nothing else to do here. Let's move on. They might be coming at us again soon. But there's still a couple of turns away. Alright, it looks like there's actually isn't actually gonna be a revolt there just yet. Also, if Teclas has lightning strike, that means when we recruit him, we should actually get another recruit slot. Because of the skills he has to get along the way, I think. Because you get like draft master, don't you? I don't know, I, it's been a while since I've played as Teclas. I don't I don't remember his skill tree off by heart. I know roughly what he's got. If I was Itza, after winning those battles, I would have made a beeline straight for the Star Tower to finish me off. So, they are really dicking around. Because they had enough force to do it. But I figured that if I did enough damage to them, they see the AI don't usually like to walk around with like quarter stacks. And so because we did so much damage to them, they're like, well, we need to recover from this, and that's what they're doing. Handmaiden of the Ever Queen. That'd really help from growth, but that's not what we want. It's cost a lot just to recruit them for one turn. I mean, we do have capacity for two of them. The thing is, just by keeping them in the province, apart from having to pay them, they are providing growth, which is important. Since we had to destroy the growth building. We've still got a while to go before this is ready. Wondering if maybe we should recruit three of them, just so we can get moving faster. But I I find three to be just a little bit redundant. It's just... They just don't do enough damage on the battlefield. I'd rather wait the extra turn or so. I mean, with every turn that passes that they don't attack us, we have a higher chance of actually surviving. So, once again, I'm going to recruit the attentive one. Hopefully... Oh, actually, that reminds me. Unswerving. I serve the Phoenix King. Loyal, sir. My protection is. She does actually provide a bonus, so why don't we actually make use of it? It's one extra experience point. It's not a lot, but you know, Order must be it's better than nothing. Handmaiden of Alario. All right, so gaining extra growth—that shaved off an extra turn. 
and next turn we can see about getting a mage. Obviously finances are a little bit iffy, this is why I didn't want to recruit any of the uh, the ones with the uh, the Sisters of Avalon Global Recruitment, just couldn't quite afford them. I knew that th things were going to get tighter as we go along. Bit of a problem. Not the end of the world. If they besiege the settlement, uh, we do have access to Teclas. We should have him next turn. But we're not we're not ready. I might have to just attach that that uh, handmaiden of the Everqueen. Thing is, even if we had recruited um, Sisters of Avalon on the turn that we could have recruited, they'd still actually they'd be finished this turn, wouldn't they? But I'd be totally broke. Alright, Teclas is available. Now we can actually have a look at what's available. Can I offer assistance? Come on. There is no limit to All right. my power. Let's see how he's been leveled up. Yeah, that's right. He's got draft master, he went straight for lightning strike, which is okay. Bowmaster's good. Um, yeah, look, Netavam and Tok is here, but that's two levels away. Oh, you probably should have gone Netavam and Tok before this. It's kind of too late now. Um, there's a lot of things that we could f focus on, but I really feel like we need Netavam and Tok, so let's go for that. Again, this is why we didn't want to do that. Um... What do we got for agents with this? Yeah, not the traits that we wanted. A little bit low in cash. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's an entrepreneur there. And like I said, this is more about money than anything. But... You must restore I'm going to have to cancel one of these recruitments in order to do this. Because chances are they're going to besiege it next turn anyway. Garrison 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, good. So if if they do launch the attack, we can deny their reinforcements. So we'll have a full stack and so will they. And then, like I said, we can work something out. Um, it's... Alright, I'm going to slow down on this just for, for that turn, and let's recruit the mage. Because this will make us some money. So, 1814 goes up to... It's not much. But it is an increase in income. You need to be making more money. Alright, so uh, let's see here. Shield of Thorns could be useful if we attach to the army, but I don't think we're going to get that chance. Alright, now we got to get... Oh, we can't destroy it this turn. God, if they could have just left us alone for one more turn, that would be really helpful. But it is what it is. Let's, uh, let's move on. Hopefully they back off, but they probably won't. Thing is, if we lightning strike, we won't be able to get our reinforcements from the garrison. Oh, good. They're going for the Fuming Serpent. Good. That buys us time.
So the artillery is going to get done, which means we can destroy that building and probably need to build something for money because that'll also be amplified by the uh, by the entrepreneur because it didn't get as quite as much value as I would have liked out of it. We certainly did make a profit, yeah, you know, per turn wise. Used to seeing a lot higher than that because I'm used to doing it in Lothurn. Okay. My infinite knowledge is yours. We've got 13 units in here. Right. There's 14 in there. We could go out there and attack that right now. If I bring the mage as well. Mage. So we're getting rid of this. But in order to do that, I have to cancel this. Now, that guy is probably going to besiege, but not assault the settlement next turn. Doesn't really matter too much if he does, but generally speaking, it shouldn't happen. If this army here dies, though, he might chicken out. They have a tendency of doing that. Definitely don't want to slow this down. But... We gotta do what we gotta do. And there's no... There's no super dinosaurs in here. Rank 4 general. You know, red crested skinks. <laughs> there's nothing to really be scared about here. And if I really need to, I could get the Scions of Mathland, but I don't think I need them. Because I do want to keep recruiting those other units. Okay, so looking at mages, doesn't Teclas have an ability to increase capacity of mages somewhere? Might be thinking of somebody else. Well, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to go looking through it right now. Um... Because we need to be focused on, on getting Ned of Ammon talk. Alright, let's come out here. Alright, it says we don't stand that much of a chance. But you know, these are better odds than what I gave us in the previous battle, right? And no dinosaurs in here. Worst we have to deal with are Croxagors. In all honesty, this is not a concern. We're going to slaughter them. Now, it's totally okay to sacrifice the uh, the handmaidens because we only hired them for a little bit of growth, but primarily to just refresh the list. So, let's sacrifice them up front. They'll, they'll, they'll be able to tank these guys a lot better than they will dinosaurs because dinosaurs are essentially anti-heroes. The only thing that's anti-hero in here is maybe maybe that their general. Croxicle is not great against um, generals. Uh, we'll double line it up, but I feel pretty confident here that we are going to walk away with a decent victory. They'll come at us. Yeah, I lost the bloody wand of jet, but you know, there's <laughs> nothing I could have done about that. You know, I didn't have the option to take it off before the battle. I would have much preferred them take this. Yeah, maybe maybe don't do that. Oh look, we don't we don't need to do that. Go with go with this. So yeah. If they're getting close to us, using the this on the area here to get a bit of extra physical resistance could really help. Because they're actually quite good in melee, the Sisters of Avalon. I really think you should be focusing on the higher value units. I wonder why they, they moved forward like that. It didn't really make much sense. It's not good because I wanted to shoot them and it's just not working. You should be in range, you shoot it. Like I said, it's totally okay for the sisters of Av uh, the, uh, the 
handmaidens to get killed. Totally okay. Alright, let's pop this down now. Alright, good. So, Salamander Hunting Pack probably did the most damage to us. Victory is in our grasp. Excellent. Probably looking at a close victory, but any victory is good. Um, is she dead? No. I think the army loss penalty is getting inflicted. Yeah. Yeah, I think that unit was um was unbreakable. Yeah, we'll definitely need to pursue them, but the worst of it's now over, and hopefully this will be a good opportunity for Techlist to gain some experience, which he desperately needs. He needs two levels up so that we can get Ned of Emmentok overcasted. So yeah, the, uh, the two handmaidens there took the most damage, but like I said, they're the ones we were willing to sacrifice, since I was willing to disband them anyway in trying to get the resistant trait. Shame about the damage here, but we'll just keep them in the reserve in the next battle so they don't take damage. As I expected. The Asser do not bang. Now we'll be good for money. Let's get that replenishment. Alright, good. He'll be able to use Net of Ammon Talk now. Oh, he will be able to use it upgraded. That's good. But that'll reduce the cost significantly. Okay. Good, and as we level up, we can get new Regiment of Renown, which is good for emergency situations. Uh, okay, good. Finish that off. Probably have to fight it manually, and then we'll come back. Yeah, we shouldn't take any damage. Now, just because we were willing to sacrifice the Handmaidens last battle doesn't mean we have to get them killed. Don't throw them away this battle. We don't need to. They're not going to be able to do anything to us. We just need to hold up our front line. They're not even going to get close. They'll be lucky to inflict a single casualty on us. So yeah. Hero units to stay back. Put these in the rear. Just, just in case. So that we take absolutely no damage. Single line will be just fine. And just wait for them to show up. Nothing to be concerned about. So yeah, I'd be surprised if they even inflicted one casualty on us there. Oh, they inflicted ten. Eh, well, whatever. Does it doesn't matter? Because I recover more than we lost. See, this is what you need to be doing from basically turn one: constantly fighting. We're gonna level up Techless quite a bit. As I expected, shackle them. My law master of Hoenn. Alright. Back to the Star Tower. Tower. My infinite knowledge is yours. Alright, now these two have leveled up. Oh, what's going on with this? It's choking up. Support is lacking. And we'll just go with stimulate growth, because 
We're gonna need it. Not a steadfast ally, sadly. Alright, upgrading this will give us extra capacity for mages. Another one would be good. We got the money for it, but at the same time. Hang on. There is no limit to my power. There's not okay. Uh, we got the money for it, but if we do that, we're not going to have enough to recruit. Yes. Now, if they besiege that, they'll probably lay siege for two turns, giving us some time. Because the garrison there is... it's not very good, but it's enough to... Enough for them to, to sit there and wait. I don't think they'll attack. Um, like I said, I can't do both. No, we need to leave that there. Hang on, what if I recruit four? Okay. Now, as for the handmaidens. Well, we don't. We got a prudent one there, but that's usually not what I like to go for. 5% reduced upkeep. You know, that's okay, but it's just. I don't know, for the high elves, you just don't need that. The thing is, that takes two turns. Alright, well. This is coming along. How much money will you need for that? Alright, well, I'll, I'll work on that. Okay, now we've actually got access to a technology. So, what we want to be going for is probably precise fletching, because more ammunition and missile damage would certainly come in handy. But yeah, actually start getting some fucking text done. Uh, let's see. Don't really need that done. Casualty replenishment rate would be okay, but it's not, it's not too bad, so I'll leave it be. We'll probably be at full strength before we fight them anyway. So we'll just leave that be. Let's move on. Hmm. With Gore Rock on his way to the Star Tower. Maybe I should actually take out the Fuming Serpent army first. Which means cancelling the recruitment, which is not something I wanted to do. I was hoping that they weren't going to send reinforcements. Because what could happen here is if they could end up besieging the Star Tower, which means no recruitment anyway, or they, he could go and reinforce the other army, in which case I would have to lightning strike them, rather than utilise the garrison. Which, if that was the case, that wouldn't be too bad, because I would at least have... Lightning Strike. Now, if they were recruiting from that province, Gorok has only got two uh, two of those Stegadons left, which is not enough to beat us now, yeah, provided our army actually gets recruited. We could fill up the rest of our ranks with Regiment of Renown. I don't think Gorok will actually besiege the Star Tower, because if he does that, we can sally out and beat him. But what he could do is, like I said, stop us from recruiting. So maybe what I should do is actually recruit a regiment of renown to deter him from doing that this turn. Because if he comes over here, unless he moves by force march, he's not going to land there this turn. My infinite knowledge is yours. Hmm, what to do? So, we've either got an army of 14 to take out this, of course, we'd, which should be enough. I won't be able to make it back here in time. I'm going to just stay here. Okay, I don't think that they'll assault the Fuming Serpent. And even if they do, we'll continue the recruitment. And money should be okay. I'm not going to recruit Regiment of Renown because if he does land here, with the additional garrison from here, he's dead meat. But we probably will end up losing the Fuming Serpent, if that's the case. But we're only four turns away from growing this. Hard to say. Tough decisions have to be made. I need those extra troops. Order must be maintained. Yeah, alright, moving on. So yeah, the big hope here is that he does not besiege the Star Tower. And of the secondary thing is that we don't lose the Fuming Serpent.
Good. They're sending in reinforcements, though. Are they going to attack? No. Okay, good. That was the essentially the best case scenario right there. So here's what we'll have to do next turn. We'll actually have to beat Gorok first before we go over the, to the Fuming Serpent. I probably won't be able to pursue Gorok. Just a simple victory will be, be needed because if we leave the Star Tower, we're not going to be able to get there and back in one turn. If he besieges that, he might assault it in one turn because he's got the firepower to do it. Whereas the other army doesn't. And even if it means force marching over to the Fuming Serpent, we do have reinforcements showing up. Either that or we could... It, it largely will depend on how well the battle with Gorok goes. I mean, we might end up losing the battle as well. Which I don't think so. I mean, he doesn't have reinforcements this time. We've got... I can get some Regiment of Renown. You know, that um, that Horse Archer would actually be pretty useful because we could do what I was said to do uh, in, the, in the first battle and lure, you know, one or two of their units away. Ugh, money's tight now. Alright, so, Gorok. Most of his units are trash now. I mean, Sora's Spears are not trash, but trash compared to Sisters of Avalon, right? The only thing we really had to worry about was the beasts, and they're gone. We're at full strength. Alright, so, I'm gonna grab this unit here. Goddamn, we're cutting it close with money. And these odds seem a little bit more fair. So, there's the two that we failed to kill last time. See, this is why I wanted to kill as many dinosaurs as possible. Because I killed off all the Carnosaurs and all the Bastilodons, we now didn't have to see them. Was That that must have been the same as Sacred Croxagore. Don't think I wiped them out. Doesn't matter, we'll, we'll take them out. I'm not too concerned about them. I mean, they got bogged down on my Sisters of Avalon for quite a while last time. Also, another thing is that we have more experience on some of our units now than we did last time. Terrain is not going to be as favorable as last time. We've got a larger army, though. Alright, uh, we've got actually, yeah, this unit here is faster than anything that they've got, so let's actually try to get those beasts, let me just see here, let's try to get the Feral Stegodon and the Sacred Croxagors to chase after them early so that we can kill it straight away before the infantry arrive, because they'll be slogging through the water, they'll move quite slowly, so I reckon we'll double line it again. I don't think we'll need to triple line it. Once again, willing to sacrifice them. I am ready. Not willing to sacrifice Teclas. And when they get close, we can net of them and talk. Net of them and talk one unit. Alright. So yeah, let's try to... I mean, we're not going to do any damage to the, to, to the Stegodon. But we can lure it over here, get it charging at us earlier. So their speed's 50. Yeah, they're not that much faster than the other units. That's it, get its attention. I don't feel like I need to net it. It's it's, it's dead meat. See, that's what we wanted to do in the first battle. That's what we needed to be doing. I just didn't have the tools I needed to do it. Alright, Teclas, I'm going to need you closer. Get ready to net a Vamantok. Probably the Sacred Croxagors. Alright, 
Alright, now I want you to get some of their units to go chase you, just so that the sisters of Avalon don't have to deal with the full strength of their force. See, fireball kind of wasted time, but there you go. Now oh, they're dead. Not done with you yet. Oh yeah, I can I can overcast it. Forgot about that. Extracting two of their units, chasing after one. Okay, this unit is taking too much damage. There's no need to sacrifice anyone in this. So, pull her back. And send this one here in melee to, to do some tanking. I don't want you tanking. You're important. Ideally, it would have been better if we got a light wizard. But whatever. Again, doesn't matter if she dies. Try and slow him some down as much as possible. Ready. It is done. Following up you are. It shall be. So some of our units are a bit obstructed. Ah, uh, yeah, actually, it would be good if you could finish off Gorok. Oh, wait, that's not Gorok. Where is he? Oh, he's over here. There's the army loss penalty. Wait. Oh, uh, these ones here must be... Un wait, what's going on with them? Oh, they're unbreakable. Right, right, right. Um... Damage, pull it back. This is a rare case in where we don't necessarily want a second battle out of them, so I'll try and kill as many of them as possible. Unbreakable units can be a real pain this way. Hard to finish off with archers when they're in melee. Because you don't want to shoot your own men. Alright, at least that's done for now. Most of their forces seem dead. Good. Decisive victory, hopefully that means more experience for us. Looks like only one or two units got away, but everyone else is dead. Once again, they took a lot of damage, but didn't end up dying. Alright, let's get that recovery, because we're not... Oh, I'd love the money, though. But still, we've got to improve our chances of victory. 
No point having money if we can't win the battle. <sighs> Whatever. There is no and since we didn't move at all... Oh no, we actually wiped them out utterly. Good. Alright, so you need another level up. Uh, yep, definitely want that net of ammo talk. Not a steadfast ally, sadly. One to watch, I fear. Their support is lacking. Okay. So, can we have here? Oh, God damn it. Gotta make sure we can actually reinforce. Oh, now we can actually make the attack. Okay. So he's caught between a rock and a hard place here. I'm not sure if he'll be able to run away. He probably will be able to just slip by us. Um, our reinforcements are likely to come from our rear, but it's kind of a weird position that they've set up. If I have a look at the map here, it's not going to tell us where they're reinforcing from. It would be nice if it put in like a, a like a yellow arrow showing where the reinforcements are coming from. That'd be very helpful. Um, our army alone should be enough to handle this, but with the added reinforcements, I'd, I'd say we got this. Now, the next thing that Teclis needs, I think he really needs his horse. That way we can justify going up ahead of battles and casting spells before the battle begins. You know, without getting caught. You know, because if you remember the first battle, which wasn't that long ago, I sent the, uh, the handmaiden out, and she just she's on foot. She just couldn't outrun the dinosaur. But if she was on a horse, she could have. Okay, so our reinforcements are coming from over here. Okay. Um, obviously, it would be fine for our reinforcements to take the brunt of the damage. Just looking for a good place to put the artillery. Once again, I'll have them try to mess them around as much as possible. Uh, I don't think single lining is a good idea here. We'll go double lining. Keep these in reserve. Orders. There's no reason, I think, to sacrifice these two in this battle. Until some good replacements show up, I don't want to sacrifice them. Also, it seems like their uh, Rite of Primeval Glory can't... Uh, what's it called? Uh, cold ones have expired, which, you know, they were a big nuisance. I was glad to see them gone. They're not getting them again for a while. Okay, so this one here seems to be isolated. Why don't we take out those red crested skinks because they have low armor and no no shield block. Not particularly high damage units, these Illyrian Reavers, they're mostly just a nuisance. Never fear, fellas, Silver Helms are here, which are essentially the equivalent of the high off equivalent of Empire Knights. Oh man, it. People give me so much shit about um, the Empire Knights from the the Ikit Claw battle that I did. On legendary difficulty, Empire Knights, they are shit. I'm sorry, if, if they're one of your favorite units, I don't care. They're shit. They don't hold up on legendary difficulty. They're really. Di it's not to say that they can't. They can't inflict damage. They can. Any unit can inflict damage. Um. But it's, it really comes down to how difficult it is to actually make them do damage. This is this is why I recruit armies like Sisters of Avalon, because Sisters of Avalon do damage in every situation, you know. Whereas, you know, Empire Knights and Silver Helms, they're almost useless in a siege. Are you going to get them to break down the door? For one thing, they're not good at it. They're only really good at running down enemy units. Which, if that's what you want to do, that's fine. But it's just not a role that you need in the campaign. Alright, I should probably concentrate on the battle here. Alright, so he, he, the, uh, the Silver Helms can probably take on the Skink Skirmishers. So if you consider that super valuable, okay. You know, that being said, just about everything can take out the Skink Skirmishers.
Another thing that I sometimes get shit for is the Great Eagles. Now, to reiterate about Great Eagles, they're not complete shit. But the thing that makes them shit is the fact that they have a separate build tree, which makes them not worth recruiting, because you don't have enough build slots in any of your provinces to have a, a wasted build slot. Can't justify that anywhere. What's going on here? Uh, yeah, maybe I should have been paying attention. Forgot to do this. It's just the battle's going really well, so it just doesn't matter. And we'll have time to recover off this, because we're not going to push the attack yet. We don't have our sisters upgraded yet. Alright, we're going to take out those Croxagores. Alright, I need someone to stop these Saurus Warriors. She'll get away, so it'll be okay. Thing is, with like heroes and wizards, or whatever, it doesn't matter how much damage they take, as long as they're still alive, they're still essentially 100% effective. As long as they're not broken. be the first to admit I didn't do a great job on this battle I mean I was way more focused on explaining fucking great eagles and silver helms than I was about net netting these guys at the start which is what I should have done it's all right as long as none of the units get wiped out it really doesn't matter which is why I wasn't didn't feel a whole lot under pressure wizard got away which is fine netting them now is not going to do anything This over here, don't really care too much. This one here is what we have to focus on. Alright, cool. Alright. Yeah, that's fine. Like I said, it might seem like that went really badly. But it, it literally doesn't matter because, like I said, we are going to have time to recover after this. Their army is going is destroyed. The garrison doesn't matter in the slightest. And if we have just two turns of rest, we'll recover to full. So whether we take no casualties or this amount, it doesn't matter because we're not moving from here anyway. And they're not making an attack on us in a, for a little while. Oh, uh, I guess I guess the big difference is if I got a decisive victory, it would have given us a slight amount of extra experience, but that's fine. But yeah, no units got wiped out, so it's fine. That's another thing I've been hearing a bit lately. Oh, Legend, his micro is it sucks. Actually, my micro is really good when I give a fuck. See, most of the time when this kind of battle here, when I'm just sitting around doing nothing, it's because I don't need to do anything. Just because just because I'm not doing anything doesn't mean I have to do anything, you know? So like I said, whether we took this amount of damage or no damage at all, just didn't make any difference in my opinion. If I do this, we might not recover in time. And I do need the money. And they're completely gone. Great. Okay. Given how useful they were, I might have to keep them in the army. Okay. Money's money's tight. We're gonna get that built. If I build this, we can get another another mage so that we can make more money. Uh, it might be better not to attach her, but she kind of needs to. Let me just see here. 
I foresaw this victory. So yeah, now he needs this. Okay, we'll be able to use him a lot more effectively now. They're not going to make the attack on Starter. If they did, it's not going to be a problem to deal with. It would be good if we sit inside of Fuming Serpent, but if I do that, I have to force march. We're not going to get any recruitment done. But that being said, we have, like, no money anyway, so recruitment is probably not even a good idea in the first place. So what should we do? Probably sit here. Because what I think we'll need to do, we'll need to destroy this, and then that'll give us the amount of money that we need when we build it up to be able to pay for other troops. Well, actually, why don't we head over to the Blood Swamps and... Capture that and how's Luther Harkon doing? Where's his other settlement? All right, if I could get one of these agents to go and scout ahead, find out what's going on at the awakening, maybe we'll go capture that. The people are restive. Now would be a good time to press the attack on Itza, though. Okay, if he doesn't want to capitulate. Hmm. If he doesn't want to capitulate, like, I don't think we have to worry about Luther Harkon too much. He seems to be busy. Yeah, he's pretty busy. We could actually go ahead, get down here relatively quickly before they rebuild their forces. That seems to be all they've got left. Maybe I shouldn't have taken the ransom, because we're not going to get replenishment now. Well, not as much replenishment. That 5% is going to hurt. Um, okay, well, what's done is done. Uh, that'll help us out with replenishment. And we got the money back from it anyway, so it's fine. Okay. So I reckon next turn we'll sail down to the Star Tower, and then the turn after that we'll sail down here. I'm not going to recruit another unit. Restore order. Okay, let's move on. So, this disaster campaign has taken a 180. Now, we do what Itza didn't do. Oh, let me guess, you want peace? Bitch, please. Okay, you had your fucking chance. Okay, you should have killed me when you had the fucking chance. I'm about to go Steve Irwin on their ass. I feel like I should have said that earlier, but I don't know. It doesn't really fit. Because what does that mean? I'm going to capture them and put them in an enclosure? That's not what I'm going to do. The only enclosure they're going in is fucking cooking pots. going to make me some crock stew. Get myself some crocodile leather boots. It's very important that we be very careful about staying anywhere near them. They have a tendency of declaring war on you if you stay out in the water. Okay. So, we still don't have a noble. He should have a noble, but you really got to build a noble in this building here. Now, we could actually demolish this. Okay, we have to also leave the, this agent behind. She's done her job, but she needs to maintain money for the time being. Now, way. this province here actually does make more money. Even at full stack, I'm not concerned. I mean, we know that this province here can't recruit particularly good units. So unless they're using global recruitment, they're not going to make it. So yeah, we stop by at the Star Tower. My infinite knowledge is yours. There's no time for recruiting this, because we've got to get going next turn. Yeah, he wants peace, and I think not. Okay. Yeah, we have to maintain public order, so it's probably better to build this so you don't have to come back here anytime soon. 
like I said, I would love to destroy that, but at the same time, this is so close to tier 5 that just you, you better build it and the walls very soon. Um, now, as for them, let's not make the same mistake you made the first time. Scout ahead. On the march. Okay, it might be better for us if we land at Marks of the Old One first and then go after True Poetal. I think when you went there, you saw gold and you're like, ah, oh, I'm going to be greedy and... Your greed ended up costing you a lot. So, let's go for the easier target first. Taking the Blood Swamp isn't going to be valuable unless we take the Awakening. I think we'll have to fill up our... Mm, only got one Regiment of Renown there. Anyway, we don't really have enough money to justify any more troops right now, so it is what it is. If you got any anything that'd be useful. Actually, if we're gonna do that, put it on her, because she's staying behind. No. Okay. The old gods and let's move on. So we'll send the the agent here to check marks of the old one first. If there's no army standing there. Well, we'll see how, what this guy's doing. Basically, we want to attack them wherever they're not, at least to begin with. We need to land safely first, set up a base operation, and then make a beeline for the capital, because there's going to be a revolt. It's on legendary difficulty. It's always going to be a revolt. So we need to make sure that it's not going to be on one of the minor settlements, because it's basically playing a guessing game. But when you've got the capital, you know it's going to be at the capital. You know, people have often asked me, how do you know when you've only got the minor settlements where the revolt's going to be? There is no way to know. I haven't figured out a way. Um, I've suspected um, whichever one had the worst public order problems, but that's been proven false. Um, I often thought it was wherever your army isn't, but sometimes it pops up where my army is, so I think it's random. Which is the most infuriating thing, because you can't give anyone a definite answer when the answer is random. Alright, right, so they're recruiting a small army there. Going down with a smaller army than what he had in the first place. But where to go? Do we land here? Or there? They're starting to recruit again pretty quickly. Uh, Chip is considered green. Because the, the capital is here. Now we should be able to hit Chupiotl, then Mangrove Coast, and then make our way up through this way. And if they recapture Chupiotl, well, who cares? Now that army moved by regular march from what I could tell, and he's probably standing somewhere around here. Can't really tell because we don't have enough intel. So a part of me wants to force march all this way, but it's not worth the risk. So we're just going to regular march. We may or may not reach there next turn. We're not yet at full strength, that's okay. So yeah, let's see how much money this one actually makes in the province. Quite a significant amount. But you know, once you've established the gold mine, you know, this province here doesn't make anywhere near as much money. But that gold mine's gonna have to wait. Like I said, I'd love to force march here, but I think it's just too risky. We do not want to get caught in force march. Otherwise, I'll just straight back to square one. Except less money this time. I don't mind taking on that army. At least we know it's there. And if I take it out, then it, you know, reduces their strength ranking even more. Like, I 
Like I said, we gotta move quickly now. We got the better of them. We took out three full stacks. Of uh, you know, one at a time, which is, like I said, you wanna be on the attack. It's so much easier to attack an enemy than to have to defend against overwhelming odds. You know, pick your battles, or else they'll be chosen for you. you know, when pushing into enemy territory, if you don't have intel, proceed with caution. If you do have intel, do whatever the fuck you like. If it looks like it's got a free run, go for it. Force march. But don't force march into the unknown. That's asking to die. Unless you're using an army of mammoths, in which case, even if it gets caught, it doesn't matter. Because you're not going to lose. Okay, well that's useful. Run in time there. So 11 units plus 7. We've still got slightly smaller army. It says it's red. We could end up in the exact same position that we were ending. Well, it wouldn't be the same. This one here could force march at us. But it looks like it's recruiting garbage. It is very risky what we're doing here, without a doubt. But we have to put a stop to this now. Yes! Okay, good. Like I said, it, it was in the red, we weren't certain, but I've seen it work before. Knew it wasn't that much movement to get there, and we can win this, because there's nothing in here that's particularly dangerous. Lightning Striker, just to reduce their leadership. And winning this here marks the beginning of the end for Itza, as long as you press the attack. Don't sit on your hands. As much as it would be good to get those additional three units to make it a full stack, you don't have time. It takes two turns to recruit. You don't have any time to wait now. Uh, we'll keep going a little bit longer. I mean, we're at 90 minutes. Okay, the best defensive position in this, uh, this battle type is right here. I don't like to position myself here because the artillery doesn't fire well. So we'll dick him around with this. And Teclas is on his horse as well, so he can... He can stuff him around. Now that we're on the horse, like I said, now we can actually use him and annoy the hell out of him. Don't have any particularly damaging spells. Uh, the cold one spear rider speed 66. They're not going to catch us. Techless. I will obliterate them. Stop. Yeah, if we can get them to chase after us, that's what it's all about. So that the archers can shoot earlier and take out their fast units, which are the only ones that we really have to worry about. Their slow units aren't going to do anything to us. That's it. You know, just dangle it right in front of their face. Didn't quite go for it there. Forward. Onward. I know the way. Got plenty of magic. Okay, that's fine if the cold run spear rider's going up to that. Might want to put them on skirmish mode. I don't usually do that, but I'm not going to micromanage that unit. The thing is, it's a small map. If they run all the way to here, uh, skirmish mode isn't going to do anything. Um, I need to rotate a little bit. Okay, start slowing them down now. Seems to be going all right there. Techless. My lawmaster. Get the wind, the wind. Halt. Do you know what I should do? I'll send the email back and tell him I won the battle. Because it's the same army. Techless. 
<laughs> of course, when he sees the video, he'll know I didn't win the battle. You know, the initial one. Um, could slow them down a little bit. Good idea. Shoot a lot of our own men. And by men, I of course mean women. Don't want to misgender them. And the uh, Sisters of Avalon are doing really well. Good thing we got that defensive drill thing, because look at them hold on all of these uh, Source Warriors. No need to chase them down because they're stuck inside of a settlement. And we took like no damage. That's what we want to see. They'll definitely want a peace treaty after that. I mean, they already did. But don't give it to them. Not until we at least secure the province. Once the province is secured, probably probably then want to get a peace treaty. And then, uh, I don't know. Because you're going to want to secure this province. This is, this is the richest one you'll find in Lustria. And for the time being. Because there's, there's a few out here that have gold. But this one's got four regions. And... Two of those regions are ports as well, so it's one of the richest provinces in the game. This is where you want to put your, um... Claim their meager treasures. Um... Your, um... Entrepreneurs as well. Not right now, though, because... Yeah, they didn't even build the gold there. Get rid of that. Master of the White Tower. The city is crumbling! Their support is Maybe I should have just occupied it. Maybe we'll have to occupy as we go. Now... Um, I mean, I didn't even want to keep these long term, but whatever. Don't need to put her on a speed uh, on a steed now that Teclas has got one. Hand okay, go get some intel. Light. Nothing, nothing coming out this way. I mean, we can kind of tell now that that should be pretty much all they've got. But next stop needs to be down here. We should be able to hit that in one turn. Can't afford to start recruiting a second army right now. And let's move on. Cool. And over here, yeah, I mean, we might end up losing it because I looted the province. Maybe just hold off on the taxes for now. Yeah, whatever. It's only money. Who seeks me? For the king. Good. Could probably just auto resolve that. I wish I afford it manually, but I'm trying to hurry up. Okay, this time I'm just going to occupy it because public order is a little bit on the on the fritz here. Okay, it's not too bad. We 
We've got three turns, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe, sorry, a little bit more, to get to Oxal. Uh, this one, I mean, you should definitely build walls out here, because it's not too far off until the Chaos Invasion. So, we should build uh, the Public Order building here instead. By the God. See, that's really useful. You can actually put him in danger for a lot of the battle with that. Oh, you can only use it four times. Well, that's still plenty. Because that's good as well. Um, let me just see. Yeah, I'll grab that. Okay. Cool. And over here, we can pop in that extra stimulate growth, because we need the growth to build these provinces up after the war is over. So, they're still willing for peace. We won't be able to get there in a single turn, I don't think. No. My powers are wasted here. We can now recruit another wizard, and also grab that. Yep. I mean, you should get a light wizard, but in all honesty, I'm just going to go for this because you need that money. Mage of the White Tower. One to watch. It's essentially a cheap building at this stage. Cool. Like I said, you'll want to transfer them over here eventually. Okay. Just make sure that we're not going to be walking into any trap over here. Will complete my orders. Good. Okay. Just need to get there before it revolts. Doesn't matter too much if they assassinate that handmaiden, like I said, it was only hired in a in a hurry. And it's essentially served its purpose now. But you really want to get that resistant trait, uh, if you want to attach him to your army. That's what's going to help the most. Magic resistance, missile resistance, and plus five melee defense. Which, as, as you saw in that battle at Mangrove Coast, no sorry, at Chupiotl, that extra melee defense makes them being able to hold off against infantry really well. It doesn't help so much against beasts. And that way you don't need Phoenix Guard. Because, like, people often ask, why not have, like, a few Phoenix Guard in your army? Well, for one thing, Phoenix Guard require a whole building chain to get it. And another thing is that if you've got Phoenix Guard in your army, they're not shooting. So the more Sisters of Avalon you have, the more firepower you have. And if they can hold the line as well, well, then you don't need Phoenix Guard. Because I've seen Sisters of Avalon hold off Demigriff Knights before. If you manage to get their melee defense up enough, which is not hard to do. There we go, that's good. They're also, another thing is that they're heavily boosted through the tech tree. The strength of Avalon over here, plus six melee defense for handmaidens, that's really good. Alright. Make sure we stay in our own region. And two turns, yeah, so we'll get there just in time. Healing self. That would be really good for casualty replenishment rate. You should build that up, but maybe not. Build it in the third spot, build it up, and then demolish it afterwards, and then build the walls instead of it. Or, if, you know, find it somewhere else. It's okay, don't need to do any of that. All looking good. And let's take Oxil. Hopefully they actually bring their army down to Oxal. She's only wounded. No, they're not doing that. 
Because you know that they were recruiting at marks of the old ones. And the good thing here is we're going to capture the settlement on the turn it's going to revolt. That way you deal with the revolt and then just keep moving and get rid of all the, the instability problems. But yeah, I think I should have occupied Chupayotl and looted Mangrove Coast because we didn't make as much money from looting Chupayotl as we would have through Mangrove Coast. Doesn't matter, we're not here to make loot money. Here to put the snap down on the, uh, on the lizard mid necks. And also gain a few good assets. Like I said, this is probably one of the best provinces for the High Elves in the uh, in Lustria. Mage. Oh, god damn it! I know the way. Well, I screwed up. Okay. That's not good. Um, I thought we'd be able to reach it this turn, and I was wrong. What happened here? Just all of a sudden, we just didn't gain enough movement. So something happened there to lose us that much movement. We lost a third of it. I don't know where that came from. Sometimes this happens. It's really rare, but that's freaking annoying. Um, if we want to stop this revolt from happening, we have to. We have to take a drastic action. We're one public order away. If I had repaired this, it would have been fine, but I didn't think it would be in this problem. So what we have to do is recruit a general. It's going to cost us money, but just that one person there, that'll buy us the time that we need to get over here. So that really sucked. It's like the game just gave us a, threw another chief obstacle in our way to stop us from doing it. I don't know why that happened. That shouldn't have happened. You just lose a third of your movement range. Oh, it happened anyway. Well, that person's probably dead then. Look, it's not that big of a deal. You can go back and take Mangrove Coast later. So that's super unfortunate. But how was I supposed to know the game was going to magically take away 20% of my movement? Thir more than 30%, actually. Thing is, it said we had two turns. Oh, but then I moved out of the province. Oh, God, of course. I didn't think about that. He's probably got some that's boosting public order. Well, let's see what happens. Maybe this isn't... Maybe it'll be fine. It depends on whether or not the garrison recovered. Which... Okay, look, it's not worth going back there to fix it. Just, just leave it be. Like, it's it's not a super important, like, we're not even taxing the region. If it was, it's it's not, it's just not worth it. Don't, just ignore it. Take this, worry about that later. I could actually go back and deal with it. Oh, God damn it. God damn it. All of this is buying them to, look at that. They've already rebuilt their armies. This is legendary difficulty for you. Consolidating provinces is a pain. There is no limit to like I said, we power. could go down there and deal with that, but there'll be another revolt fairly soon. Like I said, the most important building is is this one here, and look, it'll fix up our public order a little bit more, just from being there. My powers are needed here. God, the, the game really loves to throw some curveballs at you sometimes when you least expect it. That... That reduced uh, campaign movement range for no explanation. Um, I have no idea why that happened. Otherwise, we would have gotten here in time. The revolt would have showed up here. No problems. But sometimes it does that. Alright, so this is a no-brainer victory here. We're not going to have any trouble. And after we've done this, I think we'll end it there, because we're at an hour and 46 minutes. 
the the campaign is out of out of uh, serious issues. I've always found the corners to be pretty poorly defended. We stand over here, we're not going to get shot by this tower, and if we take out the Croxicles, that should pretty much be what we need to do. Oh, actually, there's quite a lot of Pterodons there. Alright, looks like we're going to have to get up on the walls and just deal with those pterodons. Because that wasn't enough to cause the army loss penalty. If they can get in a bit closer, they might be able to shoot it from here. Sweat. Got here a turn later than I would have liked, but it's fine. It's a minor setback. Because the thing is, with those Skaven rebels, like they're not going to move out from that settlement. They'll capture it, and then they'll just sit there and just go and deal with them later. It's this area here is more about clearing out the lizards than Victory taking a not that valuable sediment right away. Probably best loot and occupy, because it's not gonna revolt while while that revolt is still here. And I think we'll leave it there. I mean might also might as well tax it, make make a bit of cash. Alright, so the situation, I mean you're still gonna have to deal with a lot of lizard men, but you've got progress here. Techless is Leveled up a fair bit. You've got an experienced army now. Even though it's not quite as big as it was before. Um, it's probably a bit better than what it, what it was. Because Teclas is now able to use Net of Admin Talk. Basically, we'll be able to utilize these a lot better. Because don't forget, they've also got more ammo and they'll shoot faster. Anyway, that's the end of this one. So, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks to everyone for sending me so many sale files lately. And I'll see you next time. Fuckers.